she would like for this week and she chose joy to the world and whilst looking for the carol on the internet I came across this brilliant arrangement of joy to the world from the Salvation Army Brass Ensemble in Canada and felt it just set the mood for this third Sunday in Advent of which the theme is joy so thank you Carol for choosing such an appropriate carol to set the scene for this week Christ came Christ comes and Christ will come again this is the message of Advent and Christmas. When Jesus came to earth as a baby, God made sure that all sorts of people knew he was coming. Matthew tells us how wise men as far away as Persia discovered the secret of the Messiah's miraculous birth. They came to the capital Jerusalem looking for an infant king. Herod's advisors tell him that it is in Bethlehem that the Christ child will be born. These wise men, or magi as they are sometimes called, were professional astrologers who had been trained to read the language of the sky. We do not know quite what they saw in the heavens to tell them that a king had been born in Palestine. What we do know is that some heavenly brilliance assured them that a new king had made his entrance into the world. So here again we see God speaking powerfully to people who are going about their normal everyday tasks, even when that task is to read the signs of the stars. These wise men from the East seem to have been driven to Bethlehem by an instinctive yearning to worship the new king for themselves and to lay at his feet the most priceless gifts they could think of, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The star of Bethlehem is the way for the wise men. The preparations are complete. The birth of the baby has been announced. Matthew 2 verses 2 to 9 where it says, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Christmas is a time of rejoicing. It is a time of the year when we are reminded over and over that our God is the great God who offers salvation to all people everywhere through faith in Christ. Let us join with the psalmist David who said, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his name. As we light this third candle, let us remember this joy that comes from knowing Christ as our savior. Shall we pray? Dear loving and heavenly Father, you have made known the birth of the Savior by the light of the star. May he continue to guide us with his light, enlighten us with his radiance, and strengthen us with his care, until with joy he takes us to our eternal home. For this Sunday, friends, we asked for you to bring your gifts for the toy appeal. As we have said, this third Sunday is of joy. And there are a lot of families who will be um, just dreading Christmas 
not just because of the possibility of lockdown and of all this stuff with the COVID, but because they cannot afford to give their children something for Christmas. And although Christmas isn't just about the presents, it's good to be able to share a little bit of joy that is found in Christ. And so, as you can see, the presents are all here, which you have brought and that we can give out to those families. And we just thank you for your generosity, for your contributions into bringing some light to families who are struggling just now. It will bring much joy to them all during this very difficult time. So as we continue in worship this morning, let us sing together a wonderful carol, number 105 in our songbooks. Do you know the song that the angel sang? Oh, glory in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. everyone it's already the third Sunday in Advent when was the last time you really laughed who makes you laugh who do you laugh with what makes you laugh some of the funniest moments in life are when you actually shouldn't be laughing <laughs> um, you know those times when you get the giggles and you just can't help yourself and it's joy that takes over Regardless of how your day has been, regardless of what's on the news, regardless of what tomorrow may bring, joy takes over, joy to the world as we sing at this time of year. Joy takes over, even just for a moment. Um, momentarily you forget about everything else that's going on um, because your heart is so full of joy. And our candle this week represents joy and it reminded me of the Bible verse May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. And I don't know how much peace and joy you have in your heart right now. I really hope you have some. If not, but I pray that the God of love will fill you with that. And we're going to listen to um, a different version of Joy to the World and I pray that you'll be blessed by that this morning.
chosen is a traditional Christmas carol, The Holly and the Ivy, sung by Staff Songsters.
reading is taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 20 and I'm reading from the message version. It's entitled The Birth of Jesus. About that time Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to their own ancestral town to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with his Mary, with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room at the inn. There were shepherds camping in the neighbourhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everyone worldwide. A saviour has just been born in David's town. A saviour who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises, glory to God in the heavenly heights, peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen, and it turned out exactly the way they had been told. Amen. During my conversations with people, I have asked for your favourite carols, which I may use for the meetings. And so our next carol was chosen by Joan Savile, who said that it is a favourite of hers, but also it was her mother's favourite, and has a lot of memories. I think for many of us, we would say that this would be one of our favourites. There is something of nostalgia with it, but also for the serene and beautiful portrayal of the Saviour's humble birth. As the school choir Libera sings this beautiful carol, Silent Night, allow the peaceful strains of the much-loved carol to help you worship in awe with the shepherds and sing Alleluia with the angels because of God's redeeming grace.
Greetings one and all. I don't know about you, but this pandemic has played havoc with my timetable and calendar. I found myself writing Christmas cards in November, having Zoom meetings at hours that were previously deemed to be unsociable. And you might not realise, but these little recordings that form part of our service have to be done 10 days before the service goes out. And that in itself is a strange feeling. In the recent lockdown, one of the local public health service directors floated the idea of Christmas being moved to the summer. Fortunately, that idea didn't gain any traction. But it made me think about the real message of Christmas. We always think that at Christmas time, as we put our message out there, we have a battle against commercialism. And if the idea of moving Christmas to the summer had gone forward, we'd have also been battling against the idea of the transmission of the virus. And again, it looked as if the real reason for Christmas was being pushed further and further back. And so I thought I needed to find something to steady myself down at this particular period of Christmas as we approach it through the season of Advent. And I found some words in the Calypso Carol. And that in itself surprised me because I'd always thought of the Calypso Carol as just really some kind of Christmas ditty that was quite cheerful. But in verse 4 I found these words. Mine are riches from your poverty, from your innocence, eternity. And there's a reference to time, the really important time, eternity. Mine forgiveness by your death for me, child of sorrow, for my joy. And this clip, so Carol, is brought to us by our own band, some of the Muckwear Mouth Salvation Army Band, and it's a YouTube clip, which I'm finding is now turning out to be quite a rich source of our recordings. I hope this helps you at this particular time in your spiritual experience. Thank you. <laughs> said before the first candle on the Advent wreath is for hope, the second for peace, and the third is for joy. Joy is clearly a Christmas word. When Jesus was born, God sent his angel from heaven to tell the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town of David. A savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So what is joy? Well, one university researcher says that a couple's joy in marriage is determined by each partner's ability to adjust to things beyond their control. That is a good beginning to understand the joy of Christmas because lots of life was beyond the control of those in the Christmas story. Political pressure is beyond control. In Luke 2, verses 1 to 5, we read, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to be registered. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. 
A Roman census was not a good experience because Joseph was a descendant of the famous King David. He and his immediate family were forced to register for the census in David's hometown of Bethlehem. There were no hardship and exceptions for pregnancy. Money was a problem. They were a poor young couple who could not afford the tax. Political pressure is part of every generation. Governments go to war. They legislate taxes, marriage laws, divorce regulations, education, and public health policy, lockdown. The bottom line is that the most of us have no control. We can all share the forced journey, you could say, to Bethlehem. There were frightening surprises. Joseph and Mary were not the only ones having an out of control Christmas. In Luke 2 verses 8 to 9, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. They were terrified. That is be a beyond control as life gets. These shepherds were poor, ordinary people. Life was hard, but routine. Suddenly, they were caught in the headlights of an angel. The glory of God surrounded them, so there was no place to escape. It was totally out of their control. Although the angel meant well, he started out by terrifying them, as far as the shepherds were concerned. Life was beyond their control. To those whose lives were beyond their control, the angel announced the joy of Jesus. As we just read in Luke 2, the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. How could Jesus possibly be, be good news of great joy when life is out of control? The answer is powerful and profound. Jesus has control. He will handle what we cannot. He will do what we cannot do. He is more powerful than the government. He will make room where there is no vacancy. He will settle the terrified heart. To be a Christian is to trust Jesus, to take control. It is the deep conviction that Jesus will handle what we cannot and that he will do it well. There is a sense in which we can never experience the joy of Jesus until life goes beyond our control. As Christians, we deeply trust Jesus for great good, no matter when or what. Joy, not happiness. Joy in Jesus, not circumstances. Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. But, you say, they saw Jesus that day, and that's where they got their joy. Good news? The angel's message is for those of us whose lives go beyond our control. Listen to 1 Peter 1 verse 8. It says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him, now you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. My prayer for you this morning is that you may experience the Christmas joy of Jesus. Trust in him when life is beyond your control. Because as the chorus says, he is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. For he is able more than able to handle anything that comes my way. For he is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. For he is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. We just need to trust in him and find the real joy of Christmas. 
as we sit and reflect in the joy of the season. Let's sing this just now in an attitude of prayer, this chorus that he is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we just ask just now that you will help us to remember that all things are possible through you. We try so many times to do everything in our own strength, forgetting that we just need to trust in you. We ask for those people who are struggling just now to find the joy of the Lord, the joy of the season in these difficult days we find ourselves in with the coronavirus. Help us to reflect on your love and the reason we celebrate Christmas, and also to find that real joy which is only found in you. All these things we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we are going to sing a fairly well-known carol to end our service with this morning. Although no Christmas season would be complete without the melodious singing of this um, tuneful carol, very little is known about its origin. It is believed that to have had its rise in France during the 15th century. Noel is a French word originating from Latin meaning birthday, a joyous expression of greeting to celebrate the birth of the Christ child. The first Noel portrays in vivid narrative style the story of Christ's birth with all six verses needed to complete the entire event. The sixth verse urges us to join together to sing praises to God for the marvels of his creation and for the salvation provided through Christ's shed blood. The repetition of the joyous Noel in the refrain is equivalent to our singing happy birthday to someone. It's interesting to observe that the King of Israel was first announced to certain poor shepherds only, but in the final verse, the phrases, let us all and mankind hath brought, remind us that Christ came to redeem the whole world. Let's allow the joy of Christ's birth to be reflected on our faces and hearts 
in our glad Noels of praise as we celebrate his birthday throughout this Christmas season. May God bless each one of you.
Thank you.